Well, uh, it took me eight years to get the motto on the Court of Appeals courtroom changed so that it now says, and women. But I, I suppose throughout my career, it always was, we need more women, we need more minorities, we need more people who see life a different way, whose experience in life is different as part of the law. The law needs to speak to life, and if it's excluding whole groups of people and not getting their perspective in it, then the law itself is skewed. And that's what I found, certainly in the application of the law um, and how we see what justice is. As I've progressed throughout my career, I think diversity is important not because of what I was taught to believe it represents. Instead, what I honestly believe makes or brings more value to my clients when you have a diverse uh, experience, mindset, and approach. I think that tends to uh, get to a uh, better result. I was actually told by my some of my classmates, you should go home and have babies and leave this seat for a man who's going to use the law in his work, in his profession. You know, back in 1980 when I started in the small towns, I started around Augusta, Lincolnton and McDuffie and Warren and Burke County. You know, when we walked, when I walked into a courtroom, I was probably the first woman lawyer they had ever seen. Um, and I was representing, you know, low-income women usually in, in my cat in my cases. So I felt like we were often dismissed and ignored and not paid attention to by the entire set of male. Everybody was male. All the judges were male, of course, and all the lawyers. So I felt a lot of times that they did dismiss me and my clients on what we were trying to do. Folks in Southwest Georgia literally had never seen a female attorney. Uh, had never entered their mind, for the most part, that a female attorney could be just as strong and effective an advocate as a male attorney could. And so they just had to get their hands around it. But I saw the same thing when I got into politics. Folks had never voted for a female state representative, so I had to persuade them that I could be as, just as good a candidate and just as good a legislator as my dad had. 20 years earlier. So you just had to get people to see something that they hadn't seen and visualize it and understand that there really was not going to be any difference. It, it made us all aware that there really were no limits on what we could achieve if we really went after it. For the most part, I would say I did not experience uh, like opposing counsel who were condescending because they were dealing with a female. If they started out a little bit that way, I, I think they realized they might have met their match or better and they quit doing it. Every single time somebody underestimates me as a litigator because I'm a woman, I get a huge advantage of that. It's kind of like a weird thing to say, but um, I think that's the greatest thing is just to be undermined and underestimated because then it gives me the opportunity to do a bang up job um, for my client and then really just shake up the other side and, and start getting some leverage for my client. I think that because I have experienced what I believe is an unequal playing field, that I have a unique perspective when I represent people who, for whatever reason, gender, race, religion, uh, sexual identity, are playing on less than an equal playing field. So I come to it with that experience, not because I was born a woman, but because I have had the experience of living life as a professional woman. It was very difficult for women to get jobs, even as an associate in a law firm. In, in 84, when I ran, being the only woman, everyone said, a woman's never been elected to the bench in DeKalb County. And so, I don't, I don't see that happening. Well, of course, the fact that I was a woman, I used to my advantage. And my, the slogan was, this time, this woman. 
make it different. Give, give a woman an opportunity. I think more was expected of us. Higher standards were required of women, I think, all along. I, I think we were expected to do more to prove ourselves than were, was required of men. It was almost like that practice of law effort. You had to get that barrier, get over that barrier first, and then people said, oh, okay, yeah, I hadn't thought about it, but the job doesn't involve heavy lifting. It involves brain power and willpower and vision and people skills and things that perhaps women might be pretty good at. I think that, particularly in the first 10 to 15 years of my practice, that when the clients who were talking about hiring me asked me the question, can you be tough? That that was a specific reference to what they perceived as perhaps a softness that women have that might make us less effective as a trial lawyer. And I got asked that question so many times until I finally sort of aged out of the question and just said, look, I, I've you know done this job for a very long time and I think that if, if toughness is how you define that, then we'll be okay. I went to law school at a time when it was a real sea change for women in law school. The, when I started law school at Georgia, fewer than 50% of the law students were women, and when I ended at Georgia, more than 50% of the law students were women. So it was a real changeover during that period of time, and I think now there are a lot more women in law school. I was always the only woman lawyer in my law firm when I was a young lawyer. And I always felt, I don't want to call it a burden, but I always felt uh, the pressure that if I didn't perform well, that maybe there'd be no other woman uh, that would be lawyers in our law firm. So I always was uh, careful to work very hard. I always uh, took whatever assignments were there. I said, yes, sir, and did them, did them as effectively and as efficiently as I could. Uh, and I think that that, that helped I felt like I was helping all women lawyers. The ceiling had been cracked, and I had I, I felt I needed to make sure it was going to stay cracked. And that was in terms of my integrity, the work product, my competence, my the morality, everything of the way I comported myself, whether or not I was kind or not, uh, what I wore or didn't wear, everything. Throughout my bar career and throughout my career in law firms as a partner, it's always been important for me to help other women succeed. Uh, I remember becoming the first woman president of the state bar. Uh, I remember when uh, Justice uh, Leah Ward Sears became the first woman chief justice in Georgia. In fact, she was the first woman justice in Georgia. And we did a little video for her. And I remember saying, when you're first, you have to be perfect. And there is some of that, and there has been some of that for, for many of us. And so we really want to work very hard to make sure that not only will there be one woman or two women or 22 women, but maybe there'll be 1,022 women. Never in a million years would I have thought there would be a black woman chief justice of a, of a, of a Georgia Supreme Court, and it turned out to be me. Diversity and inclusion have always been a very high priority then as now. Based upon my uh, orientation as being one who believes that all of our talents, all of our strengths need to be utilized in this society. And I just really want to encourage women who are trial lawyers to not be afraid to be first chair and to ask for that lead position and to go for it. Because women have a, you know, when, when women are themselves and true to themselves, they have competency, they have compassion, we have emotion, and all that is very, very persuasive to a juror, which is made up half of women. I think that it is really hard sometimes to be a lawyer, whether you're a woman lawyer, whether you're a trial lawyer, whether you're a transactional lawyer, it's really hard to be a lawyer. It's even harder to be a good lawyer. And it's really important to stay in it and to do the best you can. Because we're trained to do it, we know what we're doing, and we need more women lawyers in the game.